it must be that time. It's time to play with some Hot Wheels. Even the kitty's getting right into this. Well, I've got lots of Hot Wheels to show you today. Today we are looking at the 1987. My full collection, almost 100% complete, not quite. Some very rare variations that I am missing, but I will tell you which ones those are. And I've had the privilege of seeing them go up for sale just this past month on eBay from the Larry Woods collection, which is currently being sold off by an eBay seller. But uh, there's only a few that I'm missing. There's a lot of cool cars that were released in 1987, a lot of new releases. Um, the last of the crack-ups, the uh, last of the real riders, and uh, but lots of other cool new models coming in, including some really awesome Action Command vehicles. Check out these big, huge pickup trucks. So, let's get into a full 1987 Hot Wheels review. Also, in this video, I will show you some of the packaging of the time in an assortment of Speed Fleet, Trail Busters, Speed Demons, Workhorses, and an assortment of other very rare vehicles. Um, these vehicles that you're seeing in the package are exceedingly expensive and hard to find. And we'll get into that in uh, a moment after we've done the identification of all the vehicles before you on the table. But some extremely rare variations here that really I either just stumbled across or was searching for for years before I found them. And uh, that's why I can't open those ones because of being on really nice cards in nice packaging and just the extreme value of those particular vehicles. But we're going to start this video off with just an identification guide. I'm going to go through all the names of the vehicles. And then afterwards we're going to talk about the particulars of each vehicle. If uh, there's something noteworthy to talk about. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, um, a, a tra kind of a current price guide for the vehicles as well. For anyone interested in knowing what their collection is potentially worth. Keep in mind, as I do these types of videos... My prices are for loose, completely 100% mint examples. So if you have chipped versions of the cars, like this uh, black lightning car has a few dings on it. So I'll give the mint value of that, but mine is not mint. And uh, it's, it's in nice shape, but there's not too many cars here that have any chips on them at all. I think maybe one, two, or three. And uh, so let's get into this video. Let's start off the identification with Action Command. This is a cool series of vehicles released starting in 1984, and this will be the final year, 1987, of the Action Command. There was a big playset as well available at some point. But these are amongst my favorite, the Tail Gunner. Looks like a big Chevy pickup truck with a winch on the front and uh, maybe two 50 caliber machine guns on a rotating turret in the back. Then we've got the Assault Crawler. Really cool tank vehicle with wheels on the bottom so it actually does roll. Same as the Shell Shocker with its tiltable turret. And the Tank Gunner with its uh, large weapons in the back as well. So some really cool Action Command vehicles. Action Command would be fate will be phased out in 1988. This was the last assortment of 1987 released uh, Action Command cars, and what a good bunch of vehicles! So let's get on into the main line. Three window 34, 40s Woody, 57 Chevy, Tampo variation there, 65 Mustang convertible, featuring an opening hood. 80s Corvette, also featuring an opening hood. Baja Bug, or Blazing Bug. Baja Bug. It says Blazing Bug on the side, but it's a Baja Bug. Black Lightning. Uh, Thunderstreak. I almost forgot that one. Now, that one's a real rider. There's only two real riders released new in 1987, so I've just kind of mixed them in where they seem appropriate, and you just saw both of them. Other than those two cars, there were no new real riders for 1987 and uh, no more real rider cars to follow for many years. And certainly not under that name. 
And we've got the Ferrari Testarossa. Now there were five versions released in 1987. The most common, or actually six, maybe even more if you count really rare variations. We'll get into that more though as the video progresses. Bronco 4x4, Fiero 2M4, Firebird Funny Car, Gulch Stepper, strange name isn't it? Jeep Scrambler, now that's always been a hit. And of course the Blazer 4x4, Chevy Blazer 4x4. Monster Vat, lots of variations there. And from the Speed Fleet, I believe, Night Streaker, Nissan 300ZX, Road Torch, Speed Seeker, Suzuki Quad Racer, also known as Suzuki ATV. And going up and over here, we have the Split Window 63 Corvette, Thunderburner, Tall Rider, Riding Tall. And in the back from Speed Demons, we've got the Zombat, one of the few standing Hot Wheel cars, as well as a very fast vehicle, flat on its back. Shark Cruiser, clever name, Shark Cruiser, I guess. And from Workhorses, we've got Road Roller. Lots of variations of that, lots to talk about there. We've got the Road Scraper, Highway Hauler, and the final dregs of the Crack Up series. Only three vehicles new for 1987, never to be seen again after 1987. The Deformula One, Indenter, and Cab Cruncher. I will give you an uh, an example of how those vehicles function when we get to them specifically. And in the background, those vehicles I was mentioning previously, very rare version of the Ferrari Testarossa with a tan interior and tan base. Extremely rare. Paid hundreds of dollars for that car. Tall Rider with the uh, newer version of the off-road wheels and the purple stripe. And uh, what is that one? That was the Evil Weevil. But it has black wall wheels, which normally it had ultra hot wheels. Then, of course, we've got multiple variations of the Road Roller, which I will get into as the video progresses. The Road Scraper. Uh, the Cat Dump Truck. Caterpillar. And the Caterpillar Front End Loader. So, let's get into some more interesting stories about these vehicles. Oh, I almost forgot. Over here from the uh, race set Turbo Tracks 3000, we've got the exclusive Glow in the Dark Tampoed Blown Camaro and Ferrari Testarossa. Both quite expensive cars to find in mint condition, especially the Ferrari for whatever reason. And an international release of this Ferrari Testarossa. Very similar to the Speed Shift 500 playset. And this one loose, only released in Europe. Same true for this Omni 024 in orange enamel. Released in France. These are just some extras I had in my collection. These two have a lot of uh, big place in my heart though. These little Renault cars. Uh, both Canadian release only and what exactly are they again one is metallic blue Renault Le Car very hard cars to find the green one slightly easier the metallic blue one I found after six years of searching on eBay with a, a following for blue Hot Wheel Renault Le Car as the keywords before I found that little car very happy to have added to my collection. Starting out with some information and pricing, we've already talked a bit about the Action Command vehicles. Um, pricing on these trucks generally between $10 and $20 in mint condition or mint on card. 
it's really more you know luck of the draw if you can find the different wheel variations as you can see there are two different wheels on each of these vehicles there's an option with the original CT and the uh, OCT or off-road CT CT stand for construction tire so you know not overly valuable vehicles pretty easy to pick up if you want to add those to your collection and in fact for the most part the 1987 cars are fairly you know obtainable at uh, decent prices between five and fifteen dollars a car in mint condition uh, so I'm really only going to point out the ones that might be worth more. These um, assault crawlers are a dime a dozen. They're, they were produced in mass quantities, as uh, is true for these two vehicles as well. So let's move on over to the main line. One of the more expensive cars in the main line is this three window 34 with the kind of the ZZ siding tampo on it. For some reason that car can command anywhere between twenty and thirty dollars in absolute mint condition. It is not a high raker, in fact there are no high rakers in 1987 whatsoever, which is new because up until 1986 they were all over the place. So the 40's Woody, it's got an elastic wrapped around the wheel for some reason, I'm going to have to take that off. Um, this is the first year it was made without being a high raker and with all small wheels instead of having the larger rear wheels. It's an easy way to identify that version. It was produced well into the you know, early 1990s, but this is an original for 87. Very common car, extremely, uh, extremely easy to find. The 57 Chevy, also true, except for this variation with the 57 Chevy Tampo on the side. Quite hard to find, may have been part of a multi-pack, uh, exclusive of the time as you can see this thing is in minty minty condition as most of these cars are that one took a while to find and I think I paid about 20 bucks for it whereas this this version here could be about five ten dollars uh, both 65 Mustangs are pretty easy to find with either interior uh, variation for five ten dollars the 80s Corvette is notable that it has a silver handbag in the back and silver inset seats with a nice little opening hood. I guess I should have mentioned that these hoods open on these cars. The Baja Bug, very common vehicle. Not so common with the real rider wheels, of course. A lot of collectors and kids of the time really like those real rider wheels, so... They're harder to find with those, but still not an overly expensive vehicle, maybe $10, $20 at most. Black Lightning, easy to find. I don't know why I don't have a mint example. And, uh, what was this one again? Something or other. I don't know. It never says on the bottom of them, but not a hard car to find either. However, there is other variations with a lighter plastic purple. Uh, surrounding the body than this darker version those I have not been able to find so I would say if you have a light plastic version where the plastic is lighter than the body or, or similar in color you've got a rare one but this this one is not overly rare at all and we're gonna work our way across here over to the Testarossas I'm gonna talk about those two separately but uh, well actually those those that one and that one but this black Ferrari Testarossa is a mainline car from the Speed Fleet. And it is the hardest color combination to find uh, for this car. And will probably cost you about $15 to $20 to get one. The white version is the second hardest. And probably about $10, $15. Interestingly, there is an all tan and white interior version, which I don't have. That would be quite rare. Don't know what that would be worth, but it would be worth something. The most extremely common version, of course, is the red car. This is like a $2 car. But what I really must point out is how well these fast or these ultra hot wheels roll. This table is almost perfectly level, but if I let go of this car, it just wants to roll. There's no other car that really does that. So it, I had to I had to actually move it away from the uh, side of the table even though this table is basically very level the the axles are just absolutely amazing in these cars 
Bronco 4x4. Uh, very common vehicle, but due to its popularity, it is quite, uh, quite a pricey piece to find in mint condition. It's a heavy piece. You're probably looking at around $15 to $25 for that one. Fiero 2M4 resembles just about every other Fiero within about a 10 year span that these were released, so not worth much at all. Firebird Funny Car, $5, $10 maybe. It's pretty cool though. It's all quite heavy and it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a funny car. So you've got a nice big metal engine and chassis underneath and a roll cage. The Gulch Stepper. Now, I have two versions here to show you. One with the CT wheels, one with the OCT wheels. Uh, what, the version I have somewhere in my collection, I, I couldn't find it for the video, features the missing Pennzoil. Oh, over, over zoom. Come back to me. I think it's Pennzoil. That yellow oval tampo to the right of the 15. There is a version of that without it. Now, unless you have that sealed in mint packaging, it's a pretty easy uh, forgery to make with a little bit of uh, nail polish remover. You can wipe that off with a Q-tip. So it's not as expensive as it used to be. Um, I don't know. I don't think I paid a lot for mine. It's just slammed away in some box somewhere. Jeep Scrambler. Pretty cool vehicle. Probably worth about $15 now. Quite common as well. A lot of cars were produced in 1987 as far as the numbers go for each of these vehicles. Blazer 4x4. We've seen this vehicle dating back to 1984, but and uh, one of the one of the few Hot Wheels with opening doors, all metal. Um, but now it has these new OCT wheels, which are basically new for 1987. So we've got that example. And over to the Monster Vet, we've got multiple variations here. Obviously, wheel variations. These are both pretty common. Starting with the most common here, second most common, least common is the blue window tint variation. I don't have a mint one. I have two like this. They're both pretty chipped and worn out. I have not been able to find a mint version of that car yet. I haven't had to pay a lot for the ones I do have. In fact, I found one at a flea market. So, ah, here's hoping. Night Streaker. Also known as the uh, Porsche nine Porsche 928. This would have been, I believe, a, a Speed Fleet car. It's got the ultra hot wheels. No interior. Quite a cheap car to find. The Nissan 300ZX. Another interesting hot wheel with the opening doors. We've seen this car before. All metal. Rolls just beautifully on those smooth uh, gold hot one wheels. With suspension. Now, there's a version that you'll see in my 1988 upcoming video that has the, uh, the uh, Ultra Hot wheels on it. That's quite a rare version, but this version here with the Gold Hot one is very common. Not worth more than about $5, $10. Uh, Road Torch, not an overly desirable car, even though it wasn't produced in any other year. Same true for the Speed Seeker. It has the opening canopy. Not sure how to do that with one hand, but anyways, the window opens up. Not, not an expensive car if you really want one. The Suzuki Quad Racers, very common, a little bit less common, but still not worth more than about five ten bucks. The one that I saw sell on eBay this past week had black wall wheels, that sold for three hundred dollars American plus with multiple bids. And there is another version with a chrome center CT wheel. I've never been able to find that one. It would be an extremely easy uh, custom to make. So I don't think I would spend any money on it if I did see it. Same with the black wall wheel version. I just can't spend that kind of money on cars. They're so easily forged. You don't really know. Uh, Tall Rider. Four variations this year. Most common. Had the uh, purple tampo and CT wheels. Less common, purple tampo and OCT wheels. I think that was about 20 bucks. The rest are like $2 vehicles. These blue versions, slightly more difficult to find. I think it's about $5, $10 for the CT. And probably the most difficult tall rider to find amongst all of the tall riders is the one with the OCT wheels. 
Now it's important to also note that the blue side tampo stripes were only released in 1987. The purple ones were released over a number of years, but other years have a more uh, enamel silver paint, not this metallic silver paint. So that's a good way to figure out what year your purple striped tall riders are. Um, this car, pretty common. The Thunderburner, one of my favorites. Also a very fast car. It's got suspension. Just a beautiful casting. Ford Thunderbird. The Split Window 63. We've got two versions here. They look identical. However, there is a light magenta paint version and a dark magenta paint version. Not sure if that's showing up on the camera or not. Hope it is. Also note that these are no longer high rakers. High rakers, as I said, discontinued in 1987. Over to the Speed Demons with the Zombat. We've got a gold chrome Zombat with a pink laser gun in his uh, in his grip. Pretty cool car. And then we've got the chrome version. Neither of these cars are overly valuable. They're pretty easy to come come across. The Shark Cruiser with ultra hot wheels quite easy to come across with the silver hot one wheels not quite as easy to come across and this car will be released again uh, in both wheel variations into the blue card years of the early 1990s as true with many of the cars that we're looking at Zombat included um, bots of these cars these cars first appeared in 1987 that's really all that counts for a loose collection anyways road roller Lots to talk about here. Got uh, two two versions here, I think. I'm not really sure why I have two of the same, but okay, those two are the same. I'm not sure why there's two of them. But over in the background, we've got um, got some things to show you. This is called this is known as the five bar version of the road roller. If you look at the guard in front of the steering wheel and seats, there are five individual bars. There is, and I'll try and do, well, there's one. This is the more common version with the three bar. So you can see the front has more bars on the one below. Um, that, that five bar version is quite rare and worth probably around $20 to $50, depending on how much somebody wants it, if, they, if you should be able to find one, let alone to be able to find one and that's in the package pricing so that's how I bought these this one has the 5 bar with the CB614 and Caterpillar Tampo on the side that's a really hard vehicle to find and this one is fairly difficult to find as well probably the third most difficult with the uh, same CB614 Tampo and Caterpillar Insignia but only the 3 bar version so you got a lot of ver you got four versions of the uh, road roller. I keep calling this one the road scraper, earth mover. It's called the earth mover. Now what we've got here is earth mover has the caterpillar 637E tampo with yellow centered wheels. It's a metal and plastic uh, beast. These are worth about five ten bucks. Now I dare you to try and find one that has gold plated rims in the package so you know it's not a forgery. These are extremely hard to find. Back in the day at Payless, 97 cents. I think I paid about 40 or 50 dollars for this. There were basically these were like the first treasure hunts long before treasure hunts came out in 1995 these gold plated wheels here it is on the dump truck they were issued on each and every model of workhorse vehicles sold in 1987 and 1987 only and they are incredibly rare most people wouldn't even notice these things amongst the millions of other workhorse vehicles that you might have in your collection this one has the yellow centered wheels the wheel loader um, Note the large opening around the air filter and the tall exhaust stack. That's indicative of a 1987. But if you have one of these with gold plated rims, that would be pretty cool. I don't actually have one. So that's uh, that's 
those vehicles and I think I guess I'll touch on the Speed Demon. We've got the Speed Demon with the black wall wheels as I'd mentioned normally found in years prior and years following with uh, ultra hot wheels. There's a closer look at the Tall Rider with the with that one and the Ferrari Testarossa from Speed Fleet. This one has a weird looking tan bumper and all tan interior whereas these cars have a two-piece interior as you can see this one being red in the center of the seats and red on the back bumper you can see the difference now and in the interior so we'll finish off the uh, remaining vehicles here we've got a workhorse highway hauler probably worth about 20 bucks nice tampa work on that good year opening plastic doors then we've got the crack ups these are some of the less common crack ups but still not overly expensive there's the smashed version of the deformula one and the indenter nice tampa work on these cars and uh, a brutal accident for whoever's driving them this truck is worth quite a bit. You could probably spend anywhere between thirty and sixty dollars for this truck. The other cars maybe twenty to thirty dollars. But crack ups always demand the most. They have a lot of nostalgia associated with them. They're heavy and they're unique to Mattel. This one has the tipping opening dump bed, which is kind of floppy and usually lost on played with models. There's not much holding it except for some very weak little plastic ears and the front a smashed up uh, grill quite a cool truck trucking so that's that's that and uh, finishing off the video we've got the turbo tracks exclusive cars I did show the turbo tracks play sets in my 1986 video so I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that again. But here they are. These cars are glow in the dark. The white portions of the Tampa work. The blown Camaro. Very fast cars. Again with suspension. Uh, no suspension on the Ferrari Testarossa. Even though these cars were released together in every playset, for some reason this car is much harder to find. Um, I actually spent close to $200 when I bought this car. I have seen it sell for you know I think fifty or sixty dollars lately uh, the one time I saw it come up I'm not sure it was as mint as this one this one has dead mint but at the time as I say about supply and demand when it comes to pricing these rare cars all it takes is two people that really want it and the price can go ludicrous the blown Camaro typically you can find these for about twenty to thirty dollars in pretty decent shape this one is dead mint so I think I paid close to 50 for that one. And finally, the uh, I'll just take a closer look at this. Uh, I believe this is a European release, international release somewhere. But same cars in the 1988 Speed Shift 500 playset, which you will see, uh, which we'll talk about in the 1988 video forthcoming. The Omni. 024 in orange enamel pretty cool lots of cars from other countries that I don't have I do not collect uh, I'm not a completist of other countries Hot Wheels it's just way too expensive to be buying them especially living in Canada the price on these cars is usually between fifty and a hundred dollars a car if not more oh my goodness the uh, the Le Car well, because this is a Canadian release only, I was very interested in getting these cars. And I also really like these little economy cars. So that one I think was about $30 or $40. And this one, I believe I spent $60 or $70 for. But it's just, I've seen it only sell once before and I missed it. It was on my watch list and I missed it. Sold for $10 to some lucky person a couple of years ago. Uh, I was at work and I totally gapped it and missed it. And, uh, you know, when I saw it come up again, I just had to have it. So happy to have that in my collection. It's probably my two favorite cars out of all these, uh, all these wonderful Hot Wheels. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the 1987 video. 
Um, stay tuned. More videos to come. Not, I don't have them coming out in the, you know, as quickly as I'd like to. It's a busy time of year for me right now, but I will endeavor to do better in the new year and bring you uh, more quality videos and, of course, more year-by-year -year Hot Wheel videos for my vintage enthusiasts. If you, th That's you if you're at the end of this video watching this part. I've got lots more cars to look at all the way up. The um, plan is to review all the cars I have right through to about 1994, and then we'll figure it out from there. So it could be many, many more months of of Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels. Stay tuned.